Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover how to use the GrooveAgent SE5 drum instrument plugin in Cubase 12. This is the included stripped down version of Steinberg's GrooveAgent 5 that can be purchased from the website. We'll go through some of the sounds included in this plugin, how to configure it, and how to adjust the sound to tweak it to your needs. <laughs> To get started, create a new instrument track with the GrooveAgent SE5 instrument plugin on it and launch the instruments window where we can access all of the controls. With the window opened for the plugin, let's look at some of the controls. Starting in the top left, we have the on off button, read automation, write automation, and AB settings buttons. The drop down above is for the presets and you can filter these by music style from the attributes view, then double click a preset to load it. If we click the category again, it will unselect it. In GrooveAgent SE5, we always have to have an instrument loaded to be able to hear any sound from the plugin. Down below, we have some controls for master volume and tuning, and a meter for CPU and disk usage. Next to that is the toolbar. The toolbar lets us change some of the settings for the MIDI input from a MIDI controller. The MIDI follow button will show the triggered note in the editor. Controller selector lets us choose a different MIDI controller such as the modulation wheel to select the velocity of our MIDI notes. Fix velocity sets all the inputs to a set velocity regardless of the velocity that the MIDI controller is sending. Global insert, aux, and pattern player buttons can switch off all these effects for the instrument. RAM save will unload the samples that are not being used to save some computer resources. MIDI reset stops the playback and resets all the MIDI. Last we have undo and redo buttons to go back and undo a change we didn't want to make. Now let's load our first drum kit. To do this we can go to the folder button that's toward the right side of the screen near the middle. If we click that, we can get a menu to open up a kit. The panel has five sections for kits, instruments, styles, MIDI, and browser. We select our kit from the kits panel. At the top, there is a selection for type of instruments. We can select all instrument sets and click that for more options. All agents will show us all the sets of drum kits. The other options are SE Studio Kit, Alan Morgan Signature Drums, SE Kits, Laser Beams, Production Grooves, Rock Pop Toolbox, and the Kit SE. We can select a subset or keep them all available to select a kit. We can also select by factory content, user created content, or all content, and narrow it down by rating. Finally, you can search a kit if you know the name of the one that you want. Select a kit by narrowing down the style, substyle, and time signature you'll be using. The kits will display at the bottom and you can select the one you want to load. Let's go to the left side of the plugin now. We'll come back to the right side to deal with styles and MIDI patterns later, but for now let's go over setting up the kit. On the left we have the drum kit and there are buttons to switch between pattern mode and instrument mode. In pattern mode, the MIDI controller should trigger a drum pattern and in instrument mode it will just trigger a hit on the drum pad. We'll start off with instrument mode. We can click on each of the pads to trigger the sound and we can see them come up in the edit panel in the middle. What this looks like will depend on what type of instrument you have loaded. We'll start with the Acoustic Agent SE kit using the Taste Like Gold kit. This display and tool set will be the same for the kit SE. From here we can make sure we're in the edit menu and then the main view down below. Clicking on any of the kit components in the left instrument pad zone makes it active in the center zone for us to change the sound. If we click on one, we can adjust the room sound, overhead, master bleed, tuning, attack, hold, and decay of each of the kit components.
Under MIDI effects, we get pad mode, rudiments, and MIDI delay, which are not activated by default. Switching to a kit from the Alan Morgan Signature Drums, using the 80s Pop Electro Pop Kit 1, we get more of a typical sample player view. All of this is running through the Beat Agent instrument instead of the Acoustic Agent SE kit or the Kit SE. The controls we get this time are completely different. With the Edit menu open to Main Mode, we can see the waveform of the sample in the middle for whatever pad we trigger. Along the top, some of the kits will have multiple files that are recorded, so if we trigger Symbol Effects 2, we can see that it loads the waveform EP1 Symbol Effects 2 and it shows it on the screen. For kits with multiple samples for a particular drum, we may get a few different numbered file names across the top. These represent the different recordings that play at different velocities. Some kits will record a lighter hit for lower velocity and a harder hit with a higher velocity, with them then using the volume and some other tools to adjust the velocity in between, instead of just using one sample and adjusting the volume of it to play with different velocities like some kits will do. Below the sample, we're given tools for volume, panning, and coarse and fine pitch tuning controls for individual parts of the kit. With the basic controls of how to adjust the sound of the kit out of the way, let's go over styles and MIDI options in the Groove Agent SE plugin to create a drum beat. I'll do this with the connection established drum kit, so let's make sure that's loaded. The styles and MIDI tools are used if you want to splice together a few different pre-made drum grooves to make your drum track, so if you're planning on writing all your MIDI custom or recording with a MIDI controller, you don't have to follow this but sometimes it's helpful to use these tools and modify them or add fills to a song because those can be harder to program and record. First, above the pads, switch to the pattern mode. Then on the right side where the folder view open to select our drum kit, switch to the style tab at the top and select the style based on the genre of music you want to work with. Here we can browse the different styles and use the play and stop buttons in the bottom of each screen to listen to what the styles are. They will each be played back in the sound of the loaded drum kit that we selected earlier. The default pattern mode will likely be a set of patterns programmed specifically for the drum kit that you're using, but often you can switch to a different style, particularly within a set of drum kits with similar mapping. If the mapping changes though, then there's a good chance that you won't be able to use a style from a different type of kit, or the notes will be all wrong. You can see from the pattern mode pads that the patterns will be triggered by notes on our keyboard and those MIDI inputs can be recorded and tracked on our instrument or MIDI track in the project. The notes can vary based on the type of instrument that's loaded, but they're usually at the way low end of the MIDI notes and in this case it's G sharp minus 1 to B0. From the pattern pads, click on the pads such as the intro, ending, main or fill to load it and press and hold the key on the keyboard or clicking with the mouse and holding to hear it play back. From here we can see the style and MIDI options at the top. We'll start with style. To select the style we want, we can use the menu in the middle where it says the style name. In style mode, there is a basic MIDI program that will play and from there we can use some of the options on the main display to tweak the pattern. We can set the quantization and swing as well as the complexity of the notes played and the intensity of the notes which changes their velocity. The circle in the center corresponds to the part of the pattern that is playing, whether it's the intro, main, ending, or fill. If we're playing something like an intro, this center circle will be locked to intro mode. It's the same if we're playing a set fill. If we have it set to main, we can have it play the main beat for a certain number of measures, and then see that the auto complexity, timing, and halftime and auto fill tools become visible at the top. We can select the auto fill to set it to play every 8 measures if we would like. The settings gear next to the fill button selects which fills from the selection of the MIDI beats can be used. For example, if I don't like the way fill 1 sounds, I can disable it here.
We can also set auto complexity so that the complexity of the drums has a little bit more randomness to it. Below we can choose if we want the hi-hat, ride, and crash singles to be enabled or only enabled for certain parts of the drum beat. At the bottom, there are a few more modes to know about and we need to press this button to turn them on. Exclusive mode makes it so only one drum beat will play at once, so we won't be able to activate both an intro, fill, and main line at the same time and have them play over top of each other. Play mode can be set to hold or toggle. In hold mode, we have to keep pressing down and sustaining the MIDI note that triggers the beat for it to play. Toggle mode will just keep playing after the button is pressed. If we want it to stop, we can press it again to completely stop, or press another pad to activate another drum beat. We can also set it to trigger the new beat immediately or with the next measure, and I usually set the mode to toggle and next measure so I can just trigger them ahead of time without worrying about messing up the timing. Last I want to cover that there's a velocity mode that sets the pattern to play at its predetermined velocity for all the notes, or at the velocity we trigger it at on the MIDI controller. Once you've created a style, you can click on the pad and drag it into the project window to add it there and it will automatically create a MIDI file for you. You can create a bunch of these MIDI files and arrange them throughout the project to play along with, or just keep them all triggered by MIDI notes, but that can sometimes change the fills and patterns throughout the song from the style tool and give you less control. From the MIDI view, we can access a bunch of different MIDI clips for different song styles and import them into the project, or trigger them with the pattern pads. Unlike the styles tool, these MIDI patterns are fixed and there's no system to automatically add fills and stuff without us manually arranging them in the project track view. The MIDI mode does actually have intros and fills that we can use, but it won't add them automatically. The last tool to cover in the Groove Agent SE plugin is the Mixer View, and that's how we can send individual drums to different channels in the main mix console of Cubase 12. To do this, switch to the Mixer View in the middle. Then along each part of the kit there is an output, and the default is set to Kit Mix, which is just the main output of the instrument. If we set each of these to their own output, Cubase 12 will create individual channels for them in the mix console view. From here we can individualize the effects that we add to the channels. From the plugin itself, we can of course access tools such as volume, muting, soloing, and panning that would allow us to do some basic mixing. Thanks for checking out this video on how to use the Groove Agent SE5 plugin in Cubase 12. If this video helped you out, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video is released. You can also check the video description for links to products in this video and all our social media accounts to stay up to date on all our new content.